how I quit my corporate job, traveled the world, and built a six-figure coaching business. In today's conversation, I'm gonna be telling you some of the, or sharing with you, some of the big lessons that I learned throughout this process of breaking free from this, this life that I had. I almost feel like I've lived two lives now. Like I lived the corporate, uh, you know, this, the stereotypical nine to five life. And now I'm living a life where I literally am traveling wherever I wanna go, making money online, uh, doing the work that I love and coaching epic human beings. And in, in today's conversation, I'm just gonna break it down for you. And if this is really for anyone who senses that they wanna walk a similar path, maybe you're working in a job that you know is not your highest alignment, you know, and, and, and you, you wanna live a life that's more authentic to that level of expression. Maybe you wanna travel, maybe you wanna have the freedom to work wherever you want. This is for you. And there is some internal shifts that need to be made that I had to make to be able to live this life. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really pumped to be able to share this with you. So let's dive into it. So the first lesson or distinction that I had to make early on in this journey that helped me break through to this, this next uh, chapter in my evolution, you could say, was the distinction that as within, so without as above, so below. And I'm gonna explain what I mean by that in a moment, but if you guys have been following my journey for a while, you know that I worked for Deloitte, I worked for one of the top consulting firms in the world, landed my dream job, got a degree in accounting and finance, was playing semi-pro soccer, and all throughout this time, when I started that, that chapter, I realized there was something inauthentic, there's something out of alignment, there's something that didn't feel right to me with the life that I was living. What I had to understand was that my internal state of mind, my internal state of being, my internal programming had created the external circumstances that resulted in me sitting in a job that I didn't like. A job that I thought was success, but wasn't success. And it was a breakthrough that I had to have, which is like, I'm responsible for this. Like everything that I think, act, say, do, and believe is responsible for this life that I'm living. And if I do not like it, then it's my responsibility to change and rewire the internal circuitry that has created that. Does that make sense? And it was the process is it, for me was it was so important that I went through this because this is when the questions started to arise, which was like, who am I? Why am I here? Like, what what do I want to do with my life? You know, what is my soul's purpose here? If I don't like this life, then what do I like? And notice how these questions start to to bring bring you layers deeper. They started to bring me a few a few slots deeper, and I started to realize that um, you know after listening to all these podcasts, like people like Tony Robbins would say, successful people just ask better questions. And as I started to ask better questions, I started to gain some authentic insights as to what is my soul's blueprint. And as you start to excavate, or as I started to excavate deeper into my own internal being, uh, my soul started to have its own expression. And as that, that, that kind of uh, unique expression started to come through, it started to result in my behavior being different, in my thinking being different. Right, and then my state of being, which is the energy, the, the 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 default vibratory energetic state that I was putting out into the world, started to become different, which resulted in new things externally coming into my world, which eventually allowed me to to shift trajectories onto this new path that I'm on now. But as within, so without. What you're seeing externally is a reflection of what's happening internally. If you don't don't like the external, start with changing the internal. That was such a big breakthrough for me that, that I have to lead with that, that, that lesson, right? I also wanna address that during this phase, during this big first lesson, is where the connection with a faith or a higher power started to emerge in a more significant way in my life. And I believe that we all must establish a connection with a higher power or, or a larger faith if you wanna go out and pursue something of grandiosity, something that is that has a big impact in the world. And up until that point, I didn't really have a faith. I was born and grew up Christian, but I never really fully believed in, I didn't know what my beliefs were in terms of a spiritual belief. And when I went through this path of understanding that like, like there's a deeper reason for my being, for my existence, I'm, there must be something deeper than me doing fucking tax returns every day. you know. And, and that started to pull me in the direction of trying to find a connection with God, find a connection with like my larger truth. When that connection got solidified, it just unlocks so much more trust, so much more faith that, hey, hey I'm, I'm being pulled in this direction. I don't know where this path is leading me, but I have full faith that it's the, it's the path I'm meant to walk, right? And surrendering to a higher power has really allowed me to unlock so much more courage in my life too, because 
I believe that no matter what happens, I believe that the path that you walk when you follow your higher calling, it is the unknown. The only way to navigate the unknown is with faith and trust. And what eventually opened up 16 months later into my corporate journey was the opportunity to take a leap of faith and quit my job and, and start a new path. The only way I could do that was, was with faith and trust in a higher power. So uh, this was a big aspect of this period or this chapter and this lesson. So lesson number two, guys, being disciplined with the things that matter. This was such a big shift for me, right? Because up until this point in my journey where I'm playing semi-pro soccer at 23, working as an accountant, I was super disciplined with getting the things done to achieve the external result that I had, which was performing well in sport, performing well in my career, which was through studying finance and accounting and you know all of the things, right? And I never put a lot of discipline into you know taking care of my emotions and my mind. Right, and during this period, I struggled with a lot of anxiety. I struggled with a lot of like low self worth because it didn't come easy to me. None of none of the accounting work I was doing came easy to me. It was almost like I was just like pushing through it, right? Because it's like I had attached myself to some inauthentic goal, and I, I really believe when whenever we're we're forcing our way through something, it, it, we're, we're out of alignment. It's 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 a, it's a program that's put into our mind. So shifting to be disciplined with the things that mattered to me which was my connection with myself to get the answers to some of these deeper questions I was asking. I had to become disciplined with a, a, a new way. It was almost like a new paradigm of discipline. And that discipline was being connected with my body, my, my mind, and um, my emotions. That, that triad unlocks the connection with the soul. You get what I mean when you get the mind, the body, and the emotions in sync, and you're disciplined with feeling them, processing them, connecting with yourself in that way, your soul then has a clear channel to come through. And that's what happened with me. My soul started to come through in a more clear and optimized channel. And I just redirected my, my focus into waking up early to prioritize that. Instead of waking up early to learn about tax law and accounting so I could be better at my career, I, I shifted and I was like, okay, this, this is not important to me. This is not what I wanna do in my future. So I shifted It was made, made more time for things like yoga and meditation and expanding my mind and, and learning about things I was actually interested in. Instead of doing the things I thought I should, I did the things that I, I knew I should be doing. It was like a curiosity instead of a false uh, goal that I was chasing, which was like career success, right? So discipline with the things that mattered. All right, guys, this is lesson number three. And this is a huge, huge breakthrough for me when I started to follow this or listen to this. This lesson is follow the feeling of expansion. I never understood what that meant. Oh, it's hard to understand what that means until you are more connected with your intuition, your body and your emotions. So, so the, the preceding lessons were, were all leading towards this. And what happened to me after about 12 months of being in my corporate job and I started to really prioritize a connection with myself and, and, and being more well-rounded and holistic in how I was showing up in the world, I started to listen, hear that my intuition speak to me and, and pull me in certain directions. I started to understand that some things expanded my heart, some things closed my heart. Heart, some activities I love, some activities I despised. I started to realize that I could still show up at my job and still feel a sense of expansion by redirecting what I focused on, which for me was people. So I started to make good friends, make powerful friendships at my work. I started to curate my, my routines around my work day so that I could show up from a place of expansion. And what that allowed was me to start to, to hear and tune into a larger calling that life was, was pulling me. And, and that comes through a subtle feeling of expansion expansion that comes into your heart. And it could be, it starts off really subtle. Like, and for me, it was like a whisper. It's like, I just want to travel. The idea of traveling was so expansive. When I was like sitting at my corporate job, looking out the window, nine to five, Monday to Friday, I was thinking about, man, I would love to go back to Canada. I'd love to go travel to Bali. I'd love to just work online. And traveling for me at that time felt very expansive. So what ended up happening was I had to learn the lessons of that chapter. It was a 16 month chapter of me being an accountant working as a lawyer. What ended up happening was I was so content and happy and present and fulfilled at my job. And that's when I knew I had unlocked the next chapter, which was to follow this feeling of expansion to go and travel. So it is my belief that every chapter of our lives is trying to teach us something and we don't get the keys to the next level until we master the level that we are, that we are on. You master the level that you're on by realizing, hey, I'm good. This is sweet. I'm like, I'm okay here. I can stay here. And that's when you know there's another level. That's when you know that's like that the expansion feeling is a little bit scary, but it's also uh, a little bit exciting. And that was the, that was what the, the, the idea of 
of quitting my job and traveling felt. And I knew I was ready for it because I'd already built the faith and trust in the higher power. I'd already built the discipline for the things that matter. So I knew I got this, it's time to quit, it's time to go. Lesson number four was I had to release the shame I was holding on to. When I stepped into the path of quitting my job and wanting to travel the world, moving back to Canada and really wanting to make money online and, and do something that allowed me to live a lifestyle that was authentic to me, which was traveling, which was doing work that I was passionate about, was just being around epic human beings. What I had to unlock inside of me or release inside of me was the shame I was holding onto that was weighing down my expression, right? And the shame is the things that we carry or, or that I was carrying from my past around where I had moments where I got put down, moments where I was embarrassed, moments where I failed. And I internalized this belief that I wasn't good enough, that I didn't, I wasn't enough, I wasn't worthy, I wasn't capable. And as I started to release this shame through sharing it with, with coaches and mentors and friends and actually saying, hey, I'm really struggling and this is why. And, and as soon as I had people around me to support me in letting go of this, this emotion, what started to unravel or unlock was more of a lightness in my being. It was more creativity. It was more freedom of expression. Shame is the emotion that weighs us down more than anything. And if you want to step more into your expression and, 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 your, and your passions, you have to let go of these dense uh, emotions such as shame. When, when I did that, it was just like my, my creativity, my, my ability to speak in public started to just you know rise and it was directly connected to my purpose because your purpose is in your pain. And for me, the pain for me was like my inability to express with confidence, my ability to speak up. And on the other side of of me releasing the shame was the purpose of speaking and coaching then became the outlet for me of, of fulfilling my mission here on earth. Now the final lesson that I want to share with you that I unlocked in this journey of stepping onto this new path was I'm an entrepreneur. And if you are listening to this too, there is a strong possibility you need to start to surrender to this belief that you're an entrepreneur as well. You know, an entrepreneur, if you want to live the life, and I wanted to live the life of travel, freedom, living on my terms, going where I wanted, working with my friends, the people that I love, and curating a life where I decide I'm in charge of when I take breaks. I'm in charge of when I work. That's the life of an entrepreneur. And it took me a while to really um, surrender to that, to, to fully like believe in like, okay, this is, this is what I'm here to do. This is what I have the ability to pursue, the entrepreneurial life. And it's scary to pursue that because it, it requires the ability to navigate risk. It requires the ability to live on the precipice of the unknown. The reward you get for choosing to live the life of an entrepreneur is you get to have all of the freedom that you want, right? You get to have, there is no ceiling in how much you you can make. I actually hated the idea of being in a corporate job and you know, there's a cap, you know, you get paid a salary and to get more salary, you, you had to like level up and it sometimes it takes five to 10 years to do it. I hated the idea of having to ask for permission to take annual leave to go and travel. Fuck that. It just wasn't for me. I, w I wanted to be my own boss and it required me to step into the path of learning how to manage my own shit. You know, it, it requires a level up of masculinity. How do I manage my own finances, manage my own money? How do I manage my routine so that my business is operating effectively? If this is a path you're willing you, you're wanting to walk, start to learn about business, start to learn about how to manage yourself correctly and do it now so that when your business starts to grow and get big, you've already got those skills that are ready to go. And these lessons are continuous, right? I'm still going deeper, still clarifying it and applying all of these key distinctions and realizations. And I hope that this has been helpful for you. Uh, because I know if you're listening to this, you're walking a similar path to me. Maybe you're looking to step more fully into this work as well. Maybe you're looking to break out of a job that doesn't feel authentic, or maybe you're already in the transition. So just remember that this phase is teaching you something. There is something that you are looking to evolve into right now. And your, your next level will be unlocked when you master this level. And I just wanted to uh, say that I'm here for you. I'm going to be sharing more content like this. Thank you for, for listening or watching wherever, wherever you're tuning into this content and uh, reach out to me, share this with someone if it resonated but reach out to me if there's something that clicked for you in this in this podcast or this conversation and uh, i love i love hearing from you hit me up on instagram john Candler show one uh, but until the next uh, video and podcast guys we'll talk to you soon much love peace